Hey, I'm very excited to announce the first of three TFE challenges. These challenges are going to allow each side, Flat Earth and Globe, to make predictions based on their respective models. And then we will see which side's predictions were most accurate. And since I'm a competitive guy at heart, we are going to add a little competition to the mix here. For TFE challenge number one, we will have a winner from each side. One winner from all the globe entries and one winner from all the flat earth entries. And the best part, we will announce the winners live from Antarctica. Now the first challenge has to do with our flights to South America. We will all fly on a very long nonstop flight to Santiago, Chile. And our participants will fly to Santiago from four different airports, Los Angeles, LAX, Atlanta, London, and Sydney. Now, three of these airports are the busiest airports in the world. It's not well known that Atlanta has the busiest airport in the world, and it's not even close. They have over 100 million passengers each year. And number two on the list doesn't even have 90 million passengers. London Heathrow is the fourth busiest airport in the world, and LAX is number eight. Now, the Sydney airport in Australia is not one of the busiest airports in the world, but as you will see shortly, will probably be the most important flight for this challenge. I have modeled these four flights on both the globe and the AE map. So let's take a look at these. First, we have the three flights from the Northern Hemisphere to Santiago, which is, of course, in the Southern Hemisphere. Just looking at this visually, the flights from Atlanta and Los Angeles look like they are about the same distance from Santiago, with the flight from LAX just a little bit longer. And then the flight from London is clearly the longest of the three. So that's the Northern Hemisphere flights, which leaves us with the one Southern Hemisphere flight, Sydney, Australia to Santiago, Chile. This flight is going to be the most interesting for this challenge as you are about to see. Let's look at this one on the globe. We are now at the southern end of the globe, and that's of course Antarctica in the middle there. And this flight path should travel south of New Zealand or over the southern end of New Zealand. New Zealand is those two islands just east of Sydney there. So those are the flight paths on the globe model. Switching to the flat earth model, let's take a look at these. We will start with the three flights that begin in the north. As you can see here, things look pretty similar to the globe. The flights from Atlanta and LAX look about the same, with the Los Angeles flight a bit longer than the Atlanta flight, and then the London flight, again, is clearly the longest of these three. But now let's turn to the Sydney to Santiago flight on the flat earth map. And this is where things get interesting. This is the one which is going to make this challenge tough. Here is the flight on the flat earth map if a direct route is taken. And as you can see, this flight would be way longer than the other flights, at least double the London flight. But if you remember on the globe, this flight would travel south of New Zealand. This flight path goes nowhere near New Zealand. And the flight on the globe travels over the ocean the entire time. This flight would actually fly over North America. Now, I've been accused of not understanding the flat Earth side. And I've been accused of not spending enough time looking into flat Earth. Three years is apparently not enough time. Now, I believe I have quite accurately represented the flat Earth position. I spent a long time listening to flat earthers and watching videos to get a good understanding of what you guys believe. Now, if you doubt that, I can even tell you what just went through your mind. You said to yourself, we don't believe this, we know it. Pretty good, huh? So with this Sydney to Santiago flight, it would not be fair of me to force the flat earth entries to calculate the distance of this flight flying in a straight line, leaving Sydney and heading north, flying over the United States, and then to Santiago. Because I think we all probably agree that this flight does in fact fly south of New Zealand or over the southern part of New Zealand. 
And I do know that jet streams play an important part when it comes to aviation. As I mentioned in a previous video, airlines must do two things to stay in business. They have to keep their prices competitive and most importantly, they need to keep their customers happy. And the only way to do this is to reduce operating costs, which fuel is the largest one, and to make the flights the quickest as safely possible. So if flying in a jet stream makes the flight faster, that makes sense. So I went ahead and made a flight path, which travels over the Southern portion of New Zealand. And here's what that flight path would look like on a flat earth. So this is the flight path you would want to calculate the distance for. Now, keep in mind that this flight path becomes way longer with this different path that travels south around the perimeter. It would now be at least three times the distance of the London to Santiago flight. So make sure you keep that in mind when you are doing your calculations. Now, when you've done a calculation, look at your answer. And if it's not at least three times or so the length of what you calculated for the London flight, you may want to double check your math. Now, I think I'm probably going to get some complaints from the flat earth side that they're not sure how to calculate the distances. And I have a solution for you. Check this out. Gleason's map has a scale on it. Notice it says at the top there, 60 miles to the degree. This is for degrees latitude. And from that, it defines the scale for the rest of the map. And people tell me I'm not familiar enough with the flat earth model. Come on now. So here is the official challenge. You need to calculate the distance from each of these four cities to Santiago, Los Angeles to Santiago, Atlanta to Santiago, London to Santiago, and finally Sydney to Santiago. Now, if you think you're just going to cheat and look up the distances online, not so fast. You must show your math. This is going to separate the men from the boys. Yes, you will need a pencil and paper for this one. I need to not only see your distances from these four cities to Santiago, but I also need to see your math. So don't forget to include that. And here is how we are going to know who wins. Remember, there will be a winner from the globe side and all the globe entries and a winner from the flat earth side and all the flat earth entries that I receive. Obviously, this assumes I will receive entries from both sides. So please don't let me down. Since we cannot directly measure these distances as these distances travel over land masses and oceans and cover a lot of ground, here is how the winner will be determined. We are going to use the actual flights that all of us take on our journey to Antarctica. All nine of us are flying through Santiago and I will obtain the flight data after each flight. And I will use that data to obtain the distance for each of those four flights. And the person whose four distances with supporting math are the closest to the actual distances for those flights will be declared the winner. All right. The challenge starts now. Go ahead and start working on this and send your answers to me, to my email, which is in the description below. Now, when you send your email, put TFE challenge one in the subject line, nothing else, just TFE challenge one. That way your submission won't be lost in the black hole that is currently my inbox. And remember, if two people submit the same answers and those end up being the closest to the actual distances of our flights, the one who turned in their entry first will be the winner. And again, winners will be announced live from Antarctica. And I will see everyone tomorrow with TFE challenge number two. Bye for now.